future. Life is good, but it can be better. And why shouldn't it be? All you need is to want it. Wonder Woman 1984 did live up to its expectations, but maybe there might have been some things that was left out, but how could we leave it out when, in a way, it all fit the story? Hello, ha! Welcome to Cinelina Reviews, and today we will be reviewing Wonder Woman 1984. Now, I like all the other DC fans out there, was very much looking forward to Wonder Woman 1984. And I was actually kind of excited to see a little bit of the trends that the 80s had in store for us. They did show a little bit of the trends. You could see some of the clothing, music retro. Throughout this film, however, it did break some physics that my husband had Angus problems. Be forewarned that a spoiler alert is now in effect. Wonder Woman 1984 is the sequel to 2017's Wonder Woman, and it's also the ninth installment in the DC Extended Universe, or DCEU. Starring in this film is Gal Gadot, Chris Pine, Kristen Wiig, and it is produced by Deborah Snyder, Zack Snyder, who is responsible for Justice League and we'll have the upcoming Snyder Cuts. I would say, to me, I felt like this movie was much better than the first. My husband says the first was better than this one. But we can't say that we hated this film. While there are some concepts to this film where we said it could have been left out, but at the same time, we did kind of need that piece of information. But it, we were just having a hard time just trying to get around and just to see what could have been left out, what could have stayed. So this film kind of starts where we see a very young Diana and she goes on to this competition against the older Amazons overseen by Quinn Hippolyta. And Diane, after falling off her horse, she takes this very shortcut in which thought she could ensure victory. But however, she was kind of caught in the end, and she was being lectured by Ant Antilop, sorry if I said that name wrong, saying that no true hero is born from lies. And that's a very good lesson to kind of get us going right away in this film, because she does make a good point, because no hero is born and created and have been able to get through their way with lies and greed. One Woman 1984 sets place 66 years after the first film, and we see Diana, who is now a anthropologist for the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. And while we go on to, and while we go on into just kind of knowing a little bit more about Diane and a little bit of the Smithsonian Institution, we come to meet Barbara who is played by Kristen Wiig, and she's kind of a unusual character. Now this is where some of her characteristics is going to come again. She's an insecure woman, and after meeting Diana, just knowing her a little bit, she's starting to become a little bit envious of her, and she's just wanting to know a bit more about Diana, and just wanting to be Diana. Later on, after Barbara just kind of gets to work on what she's doing, and working with Diana, they come to term of a stolen antique item called the Dreamstone. And the story behind this Dreamstone is that if you make a wish upon this Dreamstone, it'll grant you whatever wish you desire. And she wished that her deceased lover, Steve Trevor, was alive, and as we know in the previous film, he did pass away. And sometime later in this film, we meet Maxwell and Max Lord. Lorenz, Lorenzino, and he visits the Smithsonian under the guise of a donor and who's trying to get a hold of this Dreamstone in order for him to save his failing oil company. So after this film ends, um, my husband and I were kind of talking and in a way there is no villain in Wonder Woman 1984. Instead, and it, there is a villain, but it's not a physical person. It's not, you know, the 
Dream Master himself because you can see at the end of this film he kind of takes everything back and he is able to reunite with his son who is just back at home in Washington DC and he's just calling out for his father to come home it's more so like greed it's more so like the human greed the human desire and this is the one thing that both me and my husband kind of agree on and it's might be the same for everybody else too that we when it says it's a dream come true we always get a red flag going in our heads because if we dream of something and here within an instant this dream comes to us you know there's going to be a price to be paid and this becomes very noticeable later into the film because after Diana wishes for Steve Trevor later she starts losing her powers so there's the payback and with Max him having these wishes and granting everybody's wishes his organs start to fail he's starting to uh, get sicker and sicker and it came to the point where Barbara's character she had so much envy that she wanted to be like Diana and she didn't want to give it back she physically turned herself into who everybody says is Wonder Woman's arch enemy Cheetah now I did like the design idea of Cheetah I did kind of wish we saw a little bit more so while some of the things was expected it wasn't surprising but the ending did surprise me though I was stoked because we just saw a little bit of the end and we see this woman walking she had like just looking at her back she had like a blue cape blue dress on with long black hair and she stops like a pillar or a building structure falling to crushing this woman and her baby she turns around and it was freaking amazing the original woman who played as Wonder Woman Linda Carter made her reveal and it was a reveal that she is Asteria so I was kind of stoked I was kind of excited to see that I really am glad that she got a little bit of that recognition and fame back this is where I said I kind of wish I saw this in movie theaters just so I could hear everybody's reactions I did end up watching Wonder Woman 1984 on HBO Max and yes while it was great at the same time just seeing the surprise appearance and just hearing the guest reactions that that would have been really really good to hear it did fall short in the box office uh, budget wise it did make 200 million dollars but at the box office currently as of now it has made only 85.4 million dollars so some people said it was okay some people said it wasn't too great someone who I talked to said they even listed um, Wonder Woman 1984 a 2 out of 5 they believe it was much too much of a romance film but honestly I don't really see it that way yes I kinda see but it wasn't very last longing it was kinda very quick but I did enjoy the scene Diana just kinda opens her eyes from her sleep and her eyes wide open and she turns and Steve's right there with a pop tart in his hand he's like I had three pop tarts and three cups of coffee <laughs> It's not official as of yet, but it looks like another sequel is being developed. So I don't know exactly what we're going to be doing with this new film. I was very shocked, however, when I started this film on HBO Max, and it said at the bottom that it was two and a half hours long. I said to my husband, how much content are we going to put in this two and a half hour long the last superhero film I said that I couldn't believe that's two that was two and a half hours long was Avengers Endgame so how much content are we gonna put in here apparently we're gonna put a whole lot of content but at the same time it was hard to depict what was necessary and what wasn't necessary because they all fit within the story shorten it sure we could have shortened it just a little bit but instead of a seven minute scene we could maybe somehow cut it to three minutes four minutes but it was so hard to pull what was required and what is just kind of filler Wonder Woman 1984 I did enjoy I did enjoy it better than the first one I have to give Wonder Woman 1984 a 3.5 out of 5 Wonder Woman is a character who 
unless if she's just something off my radar, one that doesn't really have too many soul enemies. Not like Superman with Lex Luthor or Batman with Joker. I kind of would like to see who Diana is going to go up next later into the future. But I'm just kind of wondering if they used up most of their material already. I feel like you don't need to watch the first one if you are wanting to watch Wonder Woman 1984. You get caught up, especially with the Steve scene. Um, and he'll tell you exactly what has been going on through his eyes. Thank you guys so much for stopping in and taking a listen at Cinelanium Reviews. What do you guys think of today's review? Let me know in the comments below. Like this video, subscribe to Cinelanium Reviews, help me make it grow. I want to see something come out of this. If you want to be notified for personal videos or all my content, make sure you click that bell down below. I also have Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter where I'll post pictures and I'll keep putting up polls and updates on upcoming content. Too many people have lost their lives and too many of my family members have been affected by this. I am asking you to understand that our simplest prevention is our biggest protection. Take care of yourselves and others as you practice social distancing, washing hands, and staying at home. Let's try to make the world better by starting to make us better to reduce the spread of COVID-19. See you later on another day.